I'll tell you what, you can see it on Mr. Bruss' face. This is going to be a big one. Matrices as functions, welcome back. This is going to be mind-blowing or head-exploding. I don't know which, but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And Mr. Bryce Brust is absolutely correct. He would never lie to you. Would a face like that lie to you? I don't think so. So let's get to it. Matrices as functions. Now, we're going to do this in two parts. All right? So uh, hopefully it makes it a, breaks down a little bit, makes it a little bit easier. The first thing we want to talk about is the general form of a linear transformation of a vector in a plane. What? So this is just the form of what we're going to look at in trans for linear transformations when we have vectors and we're in a plane. And otherwise, we have a vector, we have a linear transformation, and it's going to be associated with a given matrix. Okay? So now, I want to show you why if I have this vector and this matrix, why we get a11 of x plus a12 of y. I want to show you why that works. So, Mr. Bean, will you let us pass? You shall pass. Great, thanks, Mr. Bean. All right, so let's take a look here. Why is it this way? Well, it's this way for this specific reason. We have a vector here, which is a two by one. I'm writing it as a matrix right here, two by one. And we have our matrix are uh, we have four components a11 a12 a21 a22 these are just things that are going to be doing transformations onto our vector things that are going to make it change into something else all right and what's going to end up happening is we're going to get this right here let's see how let's multiply this this is a two by two our dimensions match so we can do it all right we have here our first row times our first column, that's going to be A11 times X, A11 times X, plus A12 times Y, okay? And down here we have A21, A21 times X, and plus A22 times Y. So you'll see each part of these has an x and a y component in here because we are multiplying this matrix here in the end our vector would we would be writing our vector out here's our x component of our vector a component one one x plus a component one two y comma a two one x plus a two two y so it's kind of weird i understand that but this is um why we're going to have an x and a y in each part of our uh, uh, vector. So even though this is our x component and our y component, it's going to be made up of a little bit of things when we have these transformations that happen, okay? So let's take a look at one. Maybe it'll, it'll make sense a little bit more if we can look at this. So given the transformation t, all right, so we have some transformation t, and it maps our vector x, y to this new vector what would be the associated matrix so what would i have to multiply to get my new xy right so my associated matrix is going to be here and it's made up of parts it has an x part here my uh my x component is going to go my row one so three and negative one and it has a y component here four and two all right, and that is the associated matrix right there. That's it. But being able to come up with this associated matrix, you're going to see in a few minutes, we're going to have real vectors that we can multiply now by this associated matrix and get our new vector that's been transformed. Kind of exciting. I agree. Let's try the reverse way now. Let's say we know our associated matrix. We want to find what the transformation is. So when we write this transformation out, we need to say it's our x, y, and it's going to map it to our new transformation. Let's see. Our x component has a 4x and a 7y. So 4x plus 7y. And our y component has a negative 2x and a negative y. So that is our transformation. This is our transformation. We can call it T. Maybe we call it something else. 
We use t a lot for obvious reasons, transformation. And it's going to take our x and y's, and it's going to do a transformation. We're going to multiply it by a matrix, and we're going to get this over here. Right now, I'm feeling like, you know, that's a little bit out there. So let's take a look at a specific transformation. Here is a specific transformation. In fact, this is the matrix that will map a rotation that is the angle counterclockwise rotation about the origin from the original vector. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to have a vector and we're going to move it some degree counterclockwise. All right. And that matrix right here is always going to be true. And all that's going to change is our degree. So it's always going to be cosine theta, negative sine theta, and then sine theta, cosine theta. All right. The, that's always going to be the case. But let's take a specific look. All right. This may require some focus. Like Mr. Kelly here, he is focused on this right now. So what is resulting rotating pi over 2? So we're going to rotate 90 degrees, right? So we're going to take this vector, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. And we are going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now, I'm thinking 90 degrees, it should be somewhere over here, right? All right, let's take a look and see what we get. So, first of all, we need a matrix that we can associate. So we know it's going to be the cosine of pi over 2, the opposite of sine of pi over 2, or negative sine of pi over 2. Down here, it's going to be sine of pi over 2. And this is going to be cosine of pi over 2 again. All right, and we're going to multiply that by our vector, 3 4, and we're going to see what we get. So before we do that, let's simplify a few things because um, probably will make life easier. Now you'll notice I didn't make this a calculator active section because these are really simple matrices, and I honestly think it's going to take you longer to put them in your calculator than it is to multiply it out. So first of all, the cosine of pi over 2, since it's at 90, would be 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so make it a negative 1. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So now we are going to multiply these things here. So I have first row, first column. So 0 times 3 is 0. A negative 1 times 4 is negative 1. Down here I'm going to have second row, all right, first column. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 4 is 0. So we end up with negative 4 comma 3. Let's see what we got here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Hey, did a pretty good job, don't you think? Look, I don't want, like toot my horn, but toot toot! Holy cow, that was really close. All right. But now hopefully you can see a little bit more concrete of what we are talking about. When we went back here, these things are transformations, and I'm going to do things to these vectors that are going to change the vector in a certain way. This one is very concrete. It's very obvious to see that what I did was I took it and I rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Some are going to be much more complicated. All right. This is much more complicated. This says I'm, I'm, I'm doing four times the X value plus the seven times the Y component. Right. This is much, much more complicated, but that's OK. All right. Now that we think we understand, now we're going to rotate it pi over four. This is going to be a little bit more tricky, I think. I'm going to start it, then I'm going to ask you to finish it and kind of, you know, sketch it to verify what you think to see if it's accurate. So again, this is going to be cosine of pi over 4, negative sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 4, and cosine of pi over 4. Now, I know you might be thinking, like, I hope I don't have to memorize that, but really, it's pretty easy. These are cosine, these are sine, this is the only thing that I have to do the opposite of. All right, so then I have 3 over 4. So I would like you to finish that off, all right? Multiply it out, see what you get. Um, see if it actually makes sense that we're rot rotating at pi over 4 um, degrees, right? See if all of that works out on your own. Go ahead. All right, so I'm doing co cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. 
Negative sine of pi over radical 4 is negative radical 2 over 2, and then radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2. When I multiplied it, combined it, I got negative radical 2 over 2 and 7 radical 2 over 2. Now, it's real important to understand that this is a matrix that represents this vertex, or vector, excuse me. I. All right. Much like I didn't write this over here, but this matrix represents this vector, right? We took the original vector, we transformed it by rotating it pi over 2 degrees clockwise, and we got that. So this one, likewise, is the same. And what I did was I sketched it. So this is a bad sketch, but 3 over, 4 up, and then pi over 4 is about 45 degrees, but I estimated it as negative 0.71, about here, and then a 4.9. All estimates. Is that a 45 degree exactly? No. But is it close? Close enough, I think. Not bad. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. All right. So maybe some of you have some other transformations, right? So this one, it says the X coordinate triples and the Y coordinate doubles. So what I like to do first is start with my transformation. Let's see what that is. So I have X, Y, and it's going to go to double... Uh, no, triple my x coordinate, double my y coordinate. Easy. All right. That is 3, 0, and that is 0, 2. Because that's like saying I have 3x plus 0 y's and 0 x's plus 2 y's, right? That's what I'm doing there. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, 4, and let's see what we get. So, first row times first column. 3 times 2 is 6. 0 times 4 is 0. Good. Second row, first column, 0 times 2 is 0. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, you are going to be like, why did you do this? So, I got my vector of 6, 8. <laughs> now, could I have just, you know, said, all right, I'm going to triple this. And, uh, you know, or... Uh, Multiply that one by uh, 4, or excuse me, double that one. Yeah, I could have just doubled 4 and, and tripled that. I, I understand. But I want to show you why it works. All right, the math works. The transformation works. So I want you to pause the video and try B all by yourself. Come up with the associated matri matrix. Multiply it by your original vector. And what is your new transform vector? All right, so I have my transformation vector here, or matrix here. 2, 3, negative 2, 1. I multiplied it by my vector 2, 4. I got 16, 0, which is the uh, new vector, new transform vector of 16, 0. All right. Good luck on that one. Um, hopefully we broke that down simple enough for you. Not too hard. Remember the um, co uh, counter uh, clockwise transformation uh, matrix. Everything else should be easy peasy. All right. See you next time.